Hello guys, Not the Ace here, and this is going to be the final thought, in-depth thought of the conference until, well, tomorrow with Nintendo of a treehouse at the Nintendo treehouse about Zelda Wii U. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but yeah, this is the last conference for E3 2016. Sony showed what they gonna what their plan is for 2016 all the way to 2017, and I have to say is, man, that was awesome. It was just awesome. So basically, the Sony conference. I have to say this, and I know I'm sounding like a Sony supporter because I do prefer Sony over Microsoft. Again, I do apologize for that, but in my opinion, they were near perfect at this conference. Near perfect. They showed a lot of content that people were intrigued. At the same time, they kept it short. That's always been the best thing ever in anything. Make a book, keep, make a story, keep it short, but being interested. That's what they did here in E3 2016 from Sony. So with that, they started. Basically, there was an orchestra. So I'm saying, wow, there's an orchestra. They started with an orchestra. Why is that? And it was beautiful music. And apparently, they're not. They're even a different theater. I guess apparently they used that theater before changing to another one. So they decided to go back there. Like. Um, Nice professional orchestra. They were playing a song. At first, I'm hearing the song. Why does it sound so familiar? Like God of War song. And of course, when the first game they showed, it was God of War. It was a new God of War game for the PS4. And when I saw it, I'm like, ah, oh, awesome! God of War is back. Yes, I guess it was been a lot of uh, time post skip because Kratos is aging. Now it's a bit older. And he said, wait a minute, wasn't it supposed to be God? God's own age? Yes, but because Zeus died, Kratos is no longer a God. Yeah, spoiler if you haven't played God of War 3 yet. There's a reason why God of War 3 was remastered. So, basically, they showed it. The first thing I saw was the actual show gameplay. It, they sort of went to approach of Gears of War with hacking and slashing. A little bit concerning my side because I noticed one thing: one, he doesn't have the chain, the chain blade anymore, which you have to remember it was used by, well, it was made by the god, by Athena. There's Athena's dead, so <sighs> excuse me. So apparently, you know, I guess the chain blade is no longer useful. So now he has a new weapon, some sort of axe that can go back to him. To him, kind of like what Sora with his magic hammer. So <laughs> I don't know what it means, but the gameplay basically is like it's like Ge Gears of War, kind of concerning in my opinion. No more of that fixed camera with using the sword, the chain blade, grabbing the guy and pounding them. I don't know what's going on, but we'll see once the game comes out. No release date, so it's probably not even that complete yet. But still, awesome with Gears of War. Or, excuse me, God of War, not Gears of War. Ugh. God of War is back, but the style is sort of in the Gears of War. Again, we'll see what happened. So, and for this one, I have to give props to Sean Layden. Is that before even he continued, we well, basically props to him, props to the Sony crew, I guess. Basically, the ad the address, the tragic that what happened on Sunday at Florida, and if you want to know what happened, uh, I don't even, I don't want to even talk about it because it's, it's kind of really unfortunate. But basically, he addressed the shooting at Florida in a nightclub for. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to be, can keep this in general and basic, but it is a nightclub for uh, yeah gay people. It's just yeah because it is it's a gay nightclub. But I mean it's unfortunate. Again, I'm just I'm trying to be like general as I can be because this is just what happened. The tragic it was really just really messed up. So, but 
like I said, the reason I mentioned this because, well, you know, I gotta give props because I really want to give props to to Sean Layden for really addressing it. That you know, it was unfortunately it was the day that E3 week started, and this just had to happen. Really unfortunate, even just like Sean Layton with and with the family, with his excuse me, family with his Sony crew. Basically, also you know, my condolences, my prayers, thoughts on the victim that you know it was affected, affected to it. So again, you know, yeah. So but again, props to Sony for basically addressing it. I guess it was a good move. All right. So yeah. Alright, well, anyway, uh, yeah, do apologize for that. If someone get offended, sorry. But anyway, moving from that is the shorter trailer from Ben Studio called Days Gone. So, again, new IP, and remember I said one of my hypotheses is that Sony will always gonna have new IP no matter what. So does Microsoft, they did have new IP, but of course, Sony is gonna have new IP. So, from there, is, sorry, I just got, uh, I got, uh, distracted on something. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I was looking for something. So anyway, back to my story is that, yeah, um, Days Gone by Stan, uh, Band Studio, apparently they're the one, they did the Uncharted, the uh, Vita version, so... Anyway, so for the show, this trailer is about a biker guy. Apparently, it's a post apocalyptic world. Well, basically, so the show it was interesting, but then later on, there will be gameplay, and I'll give my thoughts about that later on. So, moving from there is the show Last Guardian, more of it. Just a bit of more trailer, but the important part of Last Guardian is they finally have an official date, and it's October 25th, 2016. So, if you've been waiting for this game for a long time, it used to be a PS3, now on a PS4, there you go. Last Guardian has a date. Moving from there is Horizon Zero Dawn, they showed more gameplay. Yeah, it's kind of like, let's just say, a Sony property, Lara Croft. Or Tomb Raider. So basically, again, it's a post-apocalyptic future, futuristic world. That after what happened to the city, now it's back again to basically being nature, being backwards on technology because the bad guys are some robots that <laughs> and a robot that form of animal, and there will be like. The demo they showed was interesting one. There was this ro- mecha robot that looks like like a scorpion, but again, it looks like one of just cliche uh, robots. So then she was finding it, the main character finding it, using the skills she had, the bow, some gun that can basically rope the guy, even hacking the machine. So it's a g- good concept that it's futuristic, but at the same time, it's lost technology. Actually, that's interesting. So, can't wait for that one. I hope the reviews are good, but again, it doesn't really matter. It's about you. If you enjoy the game, go for it. So, from there, basically, they showed another David Cage game from Quantum Dream. The uh, Detroit become human. You're basically an android. And in this trailer, they, or the showcase they showed was your android name. I, for, I forget the name of the android, but he's a negotiator, and he has to negotiate to another android. And but the key, inter- interesting, this one is it's, it's basically it's sort of a choose your own adventure. So you have to choose what you need to do. What should you do? Should you try to negotiate the guy? Should you comply to the guy? Should you try to kill the... Well, it was an android. And, like, the trailer was shown, was basically demonstrating you have multiple choices, but every choice, every action is a reaction. So that is very interesting. And there's, like, a very multiple react... multiple choices, and then, of course, multiple effects what's gonna happen. So, again, can't wait for that one. That looks really interesting. I still need to play his other game, uh, Beyond Two Souls, with uh, uh, Will the Four and uh, that lady from Juno. Man, I'm having blanks here, so I do apologize. So, 
Anyway, from there, moving their ass, Sean Lennon came out and basically announced v- PlayStation VR will be coming out October the 13th at $400. Okay, the price act was already been mentioned before in GDC. They, they just said it was October. Nowadays, three, they're saying it's October the 13th. So, if you're interested with VR, here it is. My rule is maybe six months to a year, but I don't even know yet because I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be really... Really interesting with the VR, but in the virtual, some VR games that kind of could work with PlayStation VR. So one of them was Resident Evil 7. Yes, apparently, finally, another Resident Evil that's coming January 2017. And there's like a VR version, but there's also the console version. And that's not like exclusive because I've been mean, after they show the trailer. I read somewhere. I read the website. I went to. I surfed the web. That's what I'm trying to say. Ugh. I do apologize. I'm doing this because like late, <laughs> because it's already night here. And they said it's really a multi-platform game. Now surprising it should be, but then apparently Sony should be having a demo like coming tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. So I don't know what it means, but it is very interesting. So, again, for you all Resident Evil fan, here we go, Resident Evil 7. It looks like it's goes going back to its roots, because I can tell you, 6, I play, I have 6, uh, it's okay for me. Again, the idea of not having a lot of bullets is not really my forte, but I do need to get back to those Resident Evil games. <laughs> so, yeah, Resident Evil 6, I played 5, I got 4, I got one, I got the rail shooters, I get Revelation 1, so we'll see what happens with Resident Evil 7. Okay, moving from there is, Star Wars X-Wing VR mission, basically more from Battlefront, but you're basically a first person view, riding the X-Wing, looks interesting, we'll see what happens in the long run. So, there's another one called... Farpoint, another VR game, and unfortunately went black to <laughs> black what this game is, so I have no idea what it is, I gotta look it up, yeah, Farpoint, interesting. Alright, for moving from that one is uh, Final Fantasy 15 VR Experience. So basically the cost of this one is that you play as one of the main, the other main, well, a friend of the main character, Noct- Noctis, which is called Prompto, and basically you're playing in his per- in his view, in his first person view as Prompto. So that's what you see, like kind of like a, he's shooting with a BB gun, looking at Sydney. Yeah, it's basically Final Fantasy 15, but in Prompto's perspective. I don't know what that means. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. So, it, yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I don't know why they did that, but hey, whatever. So, yeah, those are some of the VR games that they're going to show. And according to Sean Layden, that by the end of 2016, there will be 50 VR game coming. Let's see if it's going to be good or not. Will it be like PlayStation Move? The game are just like so-so? Or will it actually be a hit? So, we'll just have to see about that one. Alright, from there, they're getting off the VR. So, they showed a trailer, or a gameplay trailer, of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Which is, like I said before in the EA conferences, COD in space! So, at first, when they showed the trailer, I thought it was like some other game. I thought it was like Wing Commander. I don't know, it just looked like a Wing Commander game. But, nope, it is Infinity Infinity Warfare, you're battling in space, breaking through battleship, uh, turning off gravity, <laughs> wow, I don't know, but I have to say, the game looks good, so I don't know why people thumbs down the game, I guess Call of Duty fans just wants, you know, Modern Warfare, because of course they did also announce Modern Warfare, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. And for and then of course, well, good news if you're a, if you're a PS4 owner, you get it 30 days early. Sad thing is, 
You still have to be, you have to get the Infinite Warfare game in order to get the other one. So that's kind of kind of sucky, and I think it's BS in my opinion. But you know, it is what it is. It's all about business, so it is an unfortunate that had to happen. We'll see. Maybe in the long run, they'll maybe they'll go wine eighty and say, "Fine, you can just buy. You can buy it without Infinity Warfare." But you know, I have to say, you know, Infinity Warfare kind of look good. But again, I don't really per- play first person shooter that much. But again, you know, think you know, you gotta think about it. It's Call of Duty in space. Yeah. So. All right. From moving from there is Charlene came out, and then in the background there was like there was um basically what's the word I'm looking for reference to Crash Bandicoot because Charlene didn't announce first there will be a Crash. I think people, they said Crash remake. If I'm correct, if I'm wrong. They said there's going to be a Crash remake. Basically, what happens is... Is that... Crash 1, 2, and Warp... Will be... Will, it's going to be built from the ground up. It's going to be built from the ground up for the PS4. So, um, we'll just have to wait and see... What happened there. But, yeah, I'll buy it in day one, you know. Because I like Crash. I did play the PlayStation version. Hopefully, you know, has some better controls... So, then of course, another one that I heard rumors about it was in Skylander Imagina- uh, Imaginator, Crash is going to be in it. And for this one, okay, so there was a lot of mixed messages I'm hearing. Okay, IGN and GameSpot basically said that Crash is only a PS4 exclusive or PlayStation exclusive. But Go Nintendo basically sort of said the what's the opposite and said no 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 Crash is in all the version. I don't know what's going on. We'll see. We'll find out if he is in all the version or is this is only a Sony exclusive. But still, you know, at least Crash is making a comeback to some extent. You know, again, if you want new, if you want Crash. You gotta buy Crash, uh, Crash the Remastered. Skylander, I'm a Skylander fan, so of course I'm gonna buy the game. But if they do have Crash as a figure, hey man, I'm getting him day one. Just displaying the guy. Cause I do like the amiibo aspect, you know, the collectibles, so. But again, that will be interesting. We'll see what happens. So, okay, from there is... They showed a trailer for Lego Star Wars 7. More of the <laughs> trailer. Really nothing new to it. Uh, I know this game has no... I don't know if there's an exclusive or not. Gotta look it up for it. But hey, you know, whatever. They, they, remember, they need something. And... I mean, it was just good to be there. But I'll explain the whole aspect of the conference. But yeah, they showed Lego Star Wars 7. I mean, hey, you know, good to play with your kids and easy trophy if you want to get trophies. So, from there, basically, they sh- they showed Spider-Man. And so the next version of Spider-Man. So, for the makers of Ratchet and Clank, they d- they're doing their own Spider-Man. So, like, why are they doing a Spider-Man game? Well, if you know the business side... Sony movie owns Spider-Man. And the only reason why Spider-Man is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is owned by Disney, is kind of like what Activision and Sony did with Crash Bandicoot. Sony and Disney also made a deal. So, but at the same time, Sony decided to do a Sony exclusive Spider-Man game. So, there you go. Made the same makers of the Ratchet and Clank. It, if the game's gonna be good, I don't know. But again, for people saying the voice, the voice of the Spider-Man in the game is Yuri Yoel, aka Sasuke. He's the voice of Sasuke and Naruto. He's also voicing in other games and anime. 
one on top of my head is he was in Bayonetta, the guy prompt no not prompto tempo brando it's a guy that has a crush with Bayonetta, I don't know the guy's name. And of course the one I know is he's the voice of Shanghai and Sun Se for in the Dynasty Warrior series game. Well Dynasty Warrior five, six, seven and eight. Yeah, so again, we'll see if the game's good or not. So, moving there is, I can't believe one of my predictions was right, and that is that Hideo Kojima is going to show something about his game, and he did. So, the, he was in stage, people applauded him, because if you know the history of what happened to Hideo Kojima and Konami, he left, with, he left Kojima in bad terms, they're trying to screw with him. Now, Hideo Kojima, they're basically just a development team, of course, Sony's funding the game, so it's a first party game from Hideo Kojima, and the game is called Dead Stranding. And the actor, surprising, the main character is Norman Reebus. And if you don't know what to deal with it, he was previously in a game called Silent Hills, which is basically Hideo Kojima, Del Toro, Guillermo Del Toro, and Norman Reebus. Of course, with all the crap is happening, they shut down the Silent Hill game. They could make a comeback. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, yep, it's a real shame about Silent Hills. I may not be a fan of it, but of course a lot of people are, and they were pissed about it. So, and here's the thing about the trailer here that's interesting. The trailer that they showed, it may not have any gameplay, but there's a lot of messages about this trailer that's very very close to Hideo Kojima's history which is basically first of all the handcuff basically is off that means it's off it doesn't have to work with a corporate i.e. Konami and then basically the name tag which is Metal Gear Solid and the five guys floating is basically just say the head of Konami they're always you know there are more than one basically they're looking beneath the worker, you know, in their ivory tower, they're not seeing the people's feet, you know, the story, because all the upper management only carries money, 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 money. Interesting how they presented that trailer. It's basically a story of finally Hideo Kojima left Konami, the big corporation. He's fighting the big corporation. Now, basically, the game is he'll fight them. So, something like that. So, and it kind of doesn't make sense, but. If you read the history of Hideo Kojima, you know what happened. So, basically, that was awesome. Kojima, congrats. You know, can't wait to see how this game goes. This is not ready yet, so it'll be a long while. So, from there, the final game is Days Gone. So, yeah, they showed the trailer in the beginning. Now, they showed the gameplay, what's Days Gone. And, unfortunately, it's another one of those per third party perspective shooter with zombies so maybe there's more than Missy Eye about it he's a biker fighting against zombie yeah it's kind of like it, a lot of people have said it reminds him of The Last of Us so again we'll just see about it it looks interesting but again we'll see and of course in the end they showed a Caesar reel and if you really look carefully a lot of the, the Caesar reel they did show games that's going to be on the PlayStation 4. There was the uh, Tecmo Koei's Attack of Titans, King of Fighter 14, which is exclusive to PlayStation 4. Uh, let's see. The story mode for Street Fighter 5, which I'm surprised it wasn't on the conference. But of course, there's going to remember, ET doesn't even start until tomorrow. So there will be more showcase. It's not gonna, it doesn't have to be in the conference. It can be just on the show floor. So, what else? Uh, yeah, so they have a lot of, I mean, some, you might recognize some of the games on the season reel, but yeah, like I said, they showed some games there. Awesome. So, again, overall, surprisingly, for less than 90 minutes, they showed some lot of good games. I mean, let's just say the Skylander and Lego Star Wars was like an add-on. Like a deserved from a main corporate. They already showed some good games that people wanted. Really awesome. And again, good reason why to have a PlayStation 4. 
because their IPs are always more variety than Microsoft. I'm sorry. They got games that's from the West, from Japan, for kids, from adult, for casual, hardcore. Sony has that. So that's why people, a lot of people like Sony because it has more variety of games. Because Sony already been proven that they can do they can do a lot of type of games. So what would I give the conference? I'll give it also a 10 out of 10. Just like uh, Ubisoft and Microsoft. Because again, it was short. Presentation was really beautiful. And they showed games for everyone that people were very interested. They didn't talk about movie about powers. I remember that one with powers that was so boring. They showed games. Maybe they didn't show Final Fantasy. Well, they, because they didn't show like Kingdom Hearts 3. But again, it was already being expected that even the Square Enix trailer for Kingdom Hearts 0.8. They said that there is no Kingdom Hearts on E3. Some of the games already, you know, like. Last of Us 2, I know that was, I think it was a rumor. Again, you know, you just have to wait and see. And remember, there's going to be Paris Game Week. That's October. And then, of course, the PlayStation Experience that's coming in December. That's like the second half of Sony's E3's presentation, let's just say. So, but yeah, overall, it's a 10 out of 10 for this one. Because they also showed good games. That's for everyone. But the best part is, they keep it short. But interesting. So, so now the conference is done. Sorry, Nintendo, you're disqualified since you're not even going to do a conference or a live digital or a live conference or a digital event. You're just going straight to your Nintendo Treehouse streaming. So with that, so who won E3 2016 here? Unfortunately, I have to give. I have to think about this. I need more time to think about it because. I'm surprising that Microsoft and Sony right now they're head to head because they offer something that people want. So I have to think like which one could be a winner, Sony or Microsoft. I have to wait about it. Well, you just have to hear that. Maybe that'll be on Friday. I'll make an announcement on Friday. In my opinion, who won? But for now, Microsoft and Sony they showed an awesome game. That's what they're both ten out of ten. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. Yes, I'll give my thoughts about the Legend of Zelda Wii U tomorrow. I know that's probably I know they have other games, but but yeah, I'll probably give my thoughts about the Zelda Wii U if something. But they are gonna show in depth what it is, so we will just have to see for that one. So with that, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time on the Zelda Wii U Thoughts.